Uh, this is Doc from Behind Closed Doors and today I'm going to be looking at Alexandra Grace, One Way Street, an animated short. Let's have a look at the video. No rational person would deny that being a woman in modern Western society comes with a unique set of difficulties. Ask the average man on the street what kind of challenges come with being a woman and he will be able to list them off with ease. Women are vulnerable to physical violence, sexual assault, objectification, being overlooked in the workplace, having to balance career and motherhood, and many... But all those things are true of men as well. ...and many other issues. Men know of these challenges, not because men are especially empathetic and sensitive to the problems of other people, but rather because society has made a concerted effort over many decades to ensure men are made aware of the difficulties associated with being a woman. This is a positive step. I like the way her head's bobbing up and down on top of her neck. Oh, in fact, actually, she doesn't have a neck. Her head's just kind of floating like an orb in space. Step. Understanding leads to compassion and greater harmony between all human beings. However, the question must be asked, is this effort that men make... <laughs> the series of bobbing heads. Is this effort that men make to empathise with women being reciprocated, or is it just a one-way street? On a societal level, are women actually interested in hearing about the unique difficulties faced by men? They're this whole men-women thing, I, I know, isn't it just being human? Isn't it just like being human being is difficult and some people are empathetic and some people aren't? There is still a segment of the female population that would deny that being a man comes with any significant challenges at all. They claim that our society is a patriarchy and that every man is the beneficiary of male privilege. Ah, the old feminist, yeah. No, this is, but this is why I make a distinguish. This like, feminists are in a, a class of their own. They're in a little, their own little box because it's a political ideology. Like a normal, uh, healthy person doesn't think that way. Of male privilege. After all, men don't have to deal with domestic violence or rape in the way that women do. Well, that's not true. Of course they do. What do they have to complain about? While they might grant that there are some worthy concerns surrounding issues like child custody, false paternity, and male suicide, which are quite three major big things, and that's one of the reasons why... Sorry, this is really wobbling. Hang on a sec. Yeah, that's, um, that's one of the reasons why I started this channel, is because to, to help people get a better understanding of what the train is, because... Um, Things are made out to be a certain way, and they, they aren't necessarily that way. Mostly these problems are brushed aside as insignificant in the face of what they claim are much more important issues faced by women. Yeah, but again, that's just feminists, and they're um, just after money and bullying people. Even though this radical feminist perspective is continuously shrinking in legitimacy and relevancy, even the average woman still has difficulty understanding the everyday challenges that men face. Well, that may be true, but then again, I think the average man has difficulties understanding what women face. I mean, we know that women have periods, for example, but it's like we don't know what it feels like to have a period. And it's different for every person, isn't it? So and it's different depending on, you know, different ones at different times of your life and stuff. So and that's something that's primarily exclusive to women and the same with childbirth and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you can empathize, but you can only empathize to a certain degree because I don't feel what you feel. It might surprise women to discover that, far from feeling privileged, many young men feel disempowered and alienated from the world around them. Oh, definitely. But then again, I think that's true of young people in general. Around them. Great progress has been made in encouraging men to open up about mental health issues and feel more comfortable expressing their emotions. But Yeah, but I think that's more of a... And that's been called for so that it's an abdication of weakness. I don't think it's out of genuine empathy. I think because, like, if you talk about mental health, then that's used against you. So I don't think it's it's for your own benefit. I think it's there's a, a malicious intent behind opening up about mental health. It's kind of like exposing your vulnerability in a way, unnecessarily to people that don't deserve it. You know, you're... Th th it's nice to have a divide between your personal life and your public life. And at the moment, there's a big call for your information to be given away and for you to open up about everything and to diminish the wall between your public life and your private life.
so that you can be exploited as an individual. But as a society, we are still reluctant to acknowledge the main reason why young men are struggling. Dating. This will come as a surprise to most women. They see no evidence in their own lives that men are struggling with dating. Oh, there's lots of evidence to suggest that. Dating is a horrendous thing to do. This will come as a surprise to most women. They see no evidence in their own lives that men are struggling with dating. To women, it seems as though men have all of the power. They think of the man who won't commit, the man who won't text her back, the man who doesn't even notice her. Yeah, but they're the men that she's sexually selected. So she has uh, handpicked those few individuals. Given the power that this man has, you have a hard time convincing her that men have it tough. However, this is exactly the problem. All of her attention is fixated on this top tier man who she desires but cannot make him desire her back. No thought is given to the countless men in the background who she doesn't desire. This is a very good video demonstration of what is actually happening. People are so focused on what they want that they don't see that what they want in the context of everything else that is out there. The closer they look at one thing, the less they see of how things are. They are essentially invisible to her, and therefore, little to no thought is given to their unique difficulties. Yet, these invisible men are not some fringe minority group. They are, in fact, the majority. Yeah, and the evidence for this is that the majority of women in history have reproduced, and the majority of men in history have not. They are, in fact, the majority. The word hypergamy refers to the female instinct to mate with the highest quality man that she can attract. From a biological level, all women are looking to pair off with the top men of society. Yeah, and I think that at the end of the day, like we all like to think that we're modern and stuff and that we're different to animals and whatnot, but we're primates at the end of the day and we're here to survive and reproduce. And women have found it difficult over the years to help in their survival value and men struggle with reproduction value pair off with the top men of society. A man who is tall, successful and good-looking will enjoy lots of female attention because of hypergamy. Who wouldn't want to be with him? After all, he is a winner. Unfortunately, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Unfortunately, in order for some men to be winners, there must be a lot of losers. This phenomenon is not completely unique to men. Everyone can recognise that some women are more desirable than others. The major difference is one of scale. According to the dating site OkCupid, 80% of men are rated by women to be below average. Figures like this confirm what evolutionary biologists have been saying for years, that women only have eyes for the top tier men. So if yeah, it's a Pareto distribution, it's Price's law, it's, um, it's, this is why I've said, like I've said in other videos, it looks like women are choosing the men that they're attracted to. But attraction isn't a choice. Their feelings decide who they're attracted to, and their feelings are determined by their biology. So it's not so much women are making this conscious choice, it's an unconscious biological decision. And I believe that there's some sort of an algorithm at play. In the same way that no one chooses if they're heterosexual, bisexual, or homosexual. It's kind of like an unconscious choice, like kind of like predetermined in a way. It's not something that you think, oh, I'll just be attracted to women today, or oh, I'll just be attracted to men today. It's kind of, it, it's, in, it's, it's much deeper than that. And so when women are rejecting the majority of men for the one man that all women want that they're all fighting over, that's something that's in nature. That's not something that is socially constructed. But, and I think for both sexes, they've got to be very forgiving of this. So if you're a successful man, dating is easy, but where does this leave the 80% of men who can't get women to even look at them? Dispossessed. Them. Too often, it leaves them with depression, loneliness, and resentment. From a purely biological perspective, one of the best indicators of your success as a biological organism is your ability to attract a partner mate with them and pass on your genes. Is it surprising that men who struggle to attract women into their lives feel like they are failures? Well, yeah, because it's not just sex, it's, it's affection, it's companionship, it's camaraderie, it's sort of like, it's intimacy. 
Too often, our society demonizes male sexuality. We celebrate female sexuality as empowering and beautiful, an expression of goddess energy. Yet, male sexuality is viewed as perverted, violent, and out of control. Male sexuality is just as valid as female sexuality. All human beings want to feel connected to one another, and sex is one of the primary ways that men feel that connection. Young men are not just sexually unfulfilled, but emotionally unfulfilled. They have a strong desire to be with the women around them. Which is why they kill themselves, which is why they shoot down schools. And you, you, so when I talk about this, it's not like, oh, men have it tough. Oh, yeah, poor you. Mm. Like, when men don't get laid, people die. And do you want people being killed? No. Then let's talk about the problem. And people go, oh, well, they should just man up. Well, they're not going to. When you have a society of young men and they're not getting laid, you're going to have huge problems in that society. And yet they feel invisible. This feeling of being... Because young, aggressive men with high testosterone who are fit and capable, if that's turned to a negative energy, there's destruction. Of being completely ignored as a sexual prospect by the opposite gender is a uniquely male experience and one that very few women will ever be able to understand. This unfulfilled need for sexual and emotional validation makes men vulnerable to exploitation from industries created to separate such men from their money. There is a lot of talk about the exploitation of sex workers, and undoubtedly there is some justification for this, but what about the other side of the story? What about the exploitation of men who fall victim to these industries? Webcam girls, prostitutes, Strippers and other sex workers are well practiced in the art of giving men the emotional and sexual intimacy they crave in exchange for money. Yeah, and it's not like the girl's fault or anything, they're just serving the market. So that's not their, it's not like a blame game or anything. The, and the answer to, to all this problem, I believe, is a man taking personal responsibility. It really is, and it's, this is. There's no way around it because it's life's just too unfair and it, nobody cares about you. So you, you have to care about yourself. See as an act. There is nothing authentic about these interactions, but many men are willing to pay lots of money for the illusion. Up until recently, Yeah, the illusion of intimacy. Many men have felt so ashamed of their failures that they did not speak up about it. They kept their pain to themselves at a massive personal cost. Even if a man did want to open up about his difficulties, Nobody cares. He was not confident that the larger society around him was interested in listening. And even if they did care, there's nothing anyone can do about it. What are you going to do, for somebody? The truth is that society has had a vested interest in closing their ears to the problems that men face. In order for things to keep functioning, society needed these men to continue to participate, primarily for financial reasons. Yeah, I agree with this. The idea of male privilege was an effective preemptive strike against any complaints from these men that their reward was not commensurate with their contribution. Yeah, they're expendable. However, the history of the West has shown that as things improve, we make more room to hear the pain of previously overlooked groups, whether it's ethnic minorities, women or homosexuals. Hopefully, now has come the time where we, as a society, are doing well enough that we have the space and compassion to listen to men describe the unique difficulties associated with being a man. But I still don't think anybody cares. For more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Yeah, that's a very good video. Um, that was a very nice introduction to the channel because I didn't know what his channel was about. Um, and I agree with what he said. So yeah, very good video. In fact, I'm actually going to look at another one. So let's have a look at one more of his videos.